How's everyone doing? Thanks for joining us in today's video. I'm here with Jeff Spencer. And if you remember a few short months ago, we did a tour of his fifth wheel. This is Alliance 310 RL called Sun Angel. And it was missing the sun part <laughs> of it. It didn't have the, the solar in we there. Kind of left them hanging. So today we're gonna talk about the 3,020 watts of rich solar up on top. Yeah, we, uh, we kind of left you hanging. It was a little cliffhanger last time, but uh, we had we were still in the decision process um, of, of finishing the, the solar panels or yeah. getting the solar panels. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the thing about solar is you can do these things in phases, and we had chosen to do that. So we went yeah. with the Battleborn batteries first, yep. 1,620 amp hours. Six game, of those game changers. Six game changers. And we um, hooked those up in series parallel, so we went with a 24 volt system. Nice. And then with the Victron equipment, we have two Victron Multi Plus Two, uh, the 24 volt, 3,000 watts. And because we have that many split, we had to do split phase, and so we're mm. able to do something kind of some creative uh, wiring with that split phase. Yeah. And so we have 240 volt split phase on there because we have kind of a clean roof we took those air conditioners off and we have this clean roof we were able to have one charge controller and yeah, one big one one big one to be able to handle all the power coming off the roof and that's the 250 volt 100 amp Victron yeah, solar Bluetooth, charge controller. Yeah, MPPT. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you ended up going with rich solar panels. What kind of started you with that path? Yeah, so we've been on a, a journey for, uh, this is our, we're going to be our 10th year of, of mobile living. And so it's kind of fun. We started out with a little travel trailer and we had a little briefcase solar and mm -hmm. we were out just testing that and it was a lot of fun. We had a couple RV batteries and yeah. and that allowed us to power some lights and a, and a TV for a couple hours. So you don't need to jump right into 3000 <laughs> watts. No, we dipped our toe into it because, you know, it can be overwhelming and also it can be kind of costly. Um, yeah. We remember going to RV shows and you'd see an RV that would have like a 10 watt solar panel on it. <laughs> And it would be right next to it. it would be a, like this big. Yeah. And it would be next to an air conditioner. And you kind of think, well, yeah. will that power that air conditioner? And mm -hmm. you learn quickly that uh, that's not the case. So speaking of the wiring, a lot of um, solar talk, you're going to hear series parallel or perhaps series parallel for your wiring. Uh, what style uh, did you go with and why? We ended up on this one. This is our first one of doing series parallel. Yes. And so we on the roof have nine uh, 335 watt panels. And in our particular layout, it worked out well to have them three in series. Yes. And then those three arrays, you know, three arrays put together in parallel. Nice, yeah. nice. And I was unable to put my system into series parallel because we have five panels and you need to have uh, that correct number to be able to do it. I couldn't do three and two. Right. Um, so if I could fit a six panel, I could have done uh, an array of three, an array of three. Right. You know, and that's that's something you've got to be mindful of because there's always, you know, you try to squeeze in another panel and then you yeah. can end up your performance being worse. Yes. So uh, there's there's a lot of education and information mm -hmm. out there. It's good to talk to some folks and maybe ask questions yeah. uh, so that you can maximize your performance. Yeah, and so some of the benefits that uh, at least I've learned over the years, you know, talking between series and parallel. Uh, so for my system in particular, I have five panels. I was using the factory wiring, mm. so it was a smaller gauge. So I hooked all five of my panels up in series. Mm -hmm. So it's 120 volts and only about 10 amps. So I'm able to have that small wiring going from the roof down yeah. uh, and not worry about that because of the high voltage and low amperage. Now, the downside to a whole series of strings like that, I was talking about shading. Mm -hmm. You know, I have five panels and a lot of stuff up on my roof with all those vents. And so as, you know, panels uh, are better with like bypass diodes and, you know, they can kind of shut down some of the panel so it doesn't affect it completely. But as more and more of your system gets shaded, mm. um, it can definitely bring down your performance. So as you're saying, the series parallel, each uh, set of those three arrays kind of act, can act independently, mm -hmm. right? So if 
one of those you know arrays is getting completely shaded the other two are not being brought down and you also want to look at your solar charge controller and not to get too you know technical on some of this but yes. you know if you have multiple uh, solar charge controllers, you're able to isolate some of those things. But in our case, because we have kind of a flat roof and yeah. we have uh, no shading up there, we were able to go ahead with one big charge controller. Yep. If you don't have that, then that's one workaround is to be able to come up with uh, charge controllers to mitigate yeah. your power loss. So maybe the <laughs> most efficient for this system would be each set of those three panels have their own charge controller and their yeah. own set of wires Correct. so that, mm -hmm. that that charge controller is maximizing those three yeah. panels so they're yeah. truly independent, independent yes. yeah and that could probably get a little bit more expensive <laughs> and it's you know more costly and you know if you're paying for labor to get yeah. something like this installed you know it's just it's just more work right I know when we bought our travel trailer uh, almost two years ago now I had a problem wanting to drill holes in that brand new <laughs> roof yeah. so we really contemplated going with uh, flexible panels. Mm. Did you have that same battle yeah. with your new rig? <laughs> I did. We did. Uh, yeah. So it's not only it's it, w the whole thing with rigid versus um, fixed or glass panels. There, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of discussion that's out there. You've got to evaluate cost. You have to evaluate performance, longevity, longevity, safety, those are, safety. Those are all things. And you know, flexible panels had a bad rap because when they first came out, and and still some of the cheaper ones. They, uh, they're so close to your roof there that they can actually perform, uh, or there's hot spots sometimes. And then the, as they heat up, they degradate as far as they don't perform as well. Yeah. So those are some things you have to evaluate. But I tell you, we really looked at it. One, for weight. I mean, that's yeah, a, weight's a big deal. Weight's a big yeah. deal. And so, you know, you can cut your weight in half uh, by having that. But the other is that drilling holes in the roof. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, yeah. you know, uh, for those of us that have had leaks yeah. uh, through the years, we know that that's just, yeah. It's, and so It's something by, you gotta watch out for. Yes. How about as far as uh, the actual installation process um, on the feet? I know I haven't done my solar installation video. I got a lot of you guys out there that have been asking for it. <laughs> And I, I have all the footage, I just haven't put it together. Um, and so how did you uh, do the actual installing onto your roof, which is a, uh, is it a TPO or is it a PVC? This one's PVC. PVC. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we have a PVC uh, roof, uh, no seams between the caps and all that. So it's just like a big sheet of PVC. Um, and the panels each weighed about 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they're about six pounds. Uh, six, so they're about six feet, a little longer than six feet. So we actually had a little, uh, like a barn raising party where we had, uh, we laid them out on the ground first and we tested them each to make sure that they they, they performed well. That is a good tip. <laughs> before, before you install them. Yeah, before we installed them. So uh, we, we tested them to make sure they were all within, they're performing well. Yeah. We tested them at tilting, we tested them laying yeah. down. And that's easy to do with a multimeter, mm -hmm. uh, just putting it right into the MC4 connectors and yeah. you'll see the voltage that it's supposed to be in spec so yeah definitely and, smart yes. move you know trying to maximize how many would go up on the roof and also the layout with the arrays that we talked about yes what was nice about rich solar and you know we can talk a little more about why we chose rich but they have larger panels or they have some larger panels that not only are larger but they're higher voltage too mm -hmm. so these were yep. 24 volt rated panels uh, and the particular one that just happened to fit perfectly between you know in was the 335 watt yes they yeah. just recently came out with a 400 watt <laughs> and we could have fit three of those up there and then six of the 335s and yeah but so then you could have got a couple <laughs> maybe 100 more watts if you would have pressed it <laughs> but you would have had to change out your charge controller situation Correct. yeah and, and then just the ma of having different sizes and, and all that we're as i'm getting older here i'm trying to simplify yeah. somewhat <laughs> well if you look at the symmetry of your RV and those solar panels mm. and not having any air conditioners up there, it really is a good looking mm. rig. I mean, it's beautiful as it is. I love this full body paint scheme by Alliance here, but yep. just having those sleek black solar panels on top, it just looks good. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you want it to work well, but you want it to yes. look good too. Yeah, it's like Apple products, right? It's it's function and form. Form and function. Yeah, which one goes first? <laughs> yes.
Hey, we already talked about flexible versus glass panels, and then so as you it narrowed it down, I was going to go with glass panels. And as I looked at that, there's a lot of choices out there. There is. I mean, you could look at Amazon, you wear yourself out with YouTube videos, and there's just uh, so many uh, that are out there. Um, and, and you know, the ones that are used on, uh, we're seeing a lot of residential ones that are coming over, and there's companies like Santan Solar that uh, are out of Phoenix, and they do recycled panels. And, yeah. And you mentioned about Lifetime, and they... They've got some that are, you know, two years into their 25-year life. So there's a lot of, uh, they warranty them to, yeah. to perform mm -hmm. quite well. And, you know, you hear prices like 25 cents and 50 cents a watt. And you think, oh, wow, that's a great deal. And, and it is. And they yeah. work well and people are, are really enjoying them. But for us, um, we are heavy boondockers. We're heavy yeah. in the mobile lifestyle. And... Ones that fit on a residential application might not be the best for a mobile one. They yeah. really haven't been tested as well. And they're usually bigger too because they're designed to go on mm -hmm. roofs and, yeah. and houses and businesses. They're they're bigger and they're higher voltages too. So yeah. you need to be mindful of that. Yeah. Some of them are 70 volts and mm -hmm. 72 volts. And so you need to make sure uh, that's going to work for your application. Yeah. I think uh, Brian from RV with Tito put four, just four giant panels on his new uh, class A, new to him that he got uh, last year. I think it was 1600 watts or something like that, but just with four panels. Mm. But for us, we wanted a, uh, we wanted something that was gonna be proven in the mobile application that were specifically for that. Um, and we looked at um, some, some different panels. And when I heard about Rich, um, we happened to be in Southern California. Uh, their headquarters is down by Ontario. And yeah. so we happened to be down close to there. But I was seeing like on uh, uh, Will Prowse, I was seeing that Battleborn uh, started yeah. carrying rich yep. panels, uh, AM Solar. Those are all industry leaders that we um, get a lot of our information from and our, yeah. uh, our insights. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 Nate uh, Yarborough um, yes. was yeah. testing them, and and so that's actually I think where I first heard f from Rich was mm. from him. He mentioned that I think in one of his blogs, and so you know yeah. he, he's kind of so you know he's like the godfather of the the Sprinter van build, and <laughs> yeah. um, you know so yeah that's it's something to uh, definitely take into consideration when you have that many people yeah. sharing that name with you. But as as good as all of those names and as reputable as all of they, those folks are. Those, those companies and those individuals are. Uh, I have trust issues. <laughs> and so I like to test things. And so I went over to Rich and I wanted to make sure I, I got to tour their factory. Uh, it, it's actually their warehouse because they're made, I believe, now in Vietnam. Okay. Um, but they have their their headquarters there. Yep. So I was able to meet with the people. I was able to test their, and then I bought a couple of the panels uh, and I took them out and I tested them with some other panels that are industry leaders. Then again, I've, I've been using some of these panels for, for almost a decade now. Yeah. And so I had some panels and I did side-by-side -side comparisons uh, of some very you know, name brand panels and yeah. I checked the performance. Almost like Will Prowse, I was tilted on a picnic table, and I had him out there on a on a uh, on a bench, and then I laid him down, and I checked the performance of them, and they were yeah. a parody with some of the bigger brands that are nice. out there. And in that, when I saw that, yeah. um, I met with the people at the company. Uh, they actually answer their phones for customer support, so that yeah. was uh, that was really something. Is all their customer uh, U.S. based customer yes. support? Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah, and. And then um, just seeing how they took care of their customers. So yeah. um, uh, the customer support, and then of course price is uh, something that's uh, we're all you know price sensitive. Deb and I we domicile out of uh, Bentonville, Arkansas, headquarters of Walmart. So we're about value too. So it's got to perform, but it also has to, the price has to be. Now, does Walmart carry rich solar? They might. <laughs> Not yet. But. I know Home Depot's starting to carry solar yeah. panels and you know, we're starting to see these in like mainstream places like that. So maybe Walmart. <laughs> they aren't yet, but maybe um, they yeah. might be soon. You know, yeah. we, uh, yeah. we do have, um, I used to work at Walmart and then I started selling to Walmart. And so that could be a possibility and we might help them out yeah. there. But the, uh, all of those things together rolled up to um, uh, rich solar, and then you know price and the performance and the, and, yeah. and the people. 
Um, so, uh, and the reputation, customer support. So, it sounds like a good yeah. decision you made with Rich. And I'm curious, uh, everybody out there that's watching that has solar is researching solar. You know, what are some of the the brands that that you have or that mm. you've experienced? And uh, share that down below with with everybody else, so we can kind of all learn from uh, different uses and uh, experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One last thing I want to talk about with a, a solar system and a battery system this size. Yeah. What can you run? Like, does this <laughs> eliminate like all of your battery needs? Um, or worries or anxieties. Hmm. Uh, we can always have more power, right? Yeah. More power. Isn't that the old Tim, the tool time guy? He was yeah. always more power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we started out with 120, 10 years ago, 120 watts. We stepped up to about 1,000 watts. Then we're at 3,000 watts. Well, this is just silly. <laughs> yeah. 3,000 watts. But we really did want to have something that would allow us to remember the run our air conditioners. We want to, this is such a cool concept, to be cool with the sun. Yeah. That is just, it's just mind blowing sometimes. It kind of is. Right now we're able to run the mini split and it draws up to the max we've seen so far is a thousand watts. Wow. And uh, we have Does two. it draw that constantly or does it kind no, of go up and down? No, that's good. It's a variable speed compressor on there. Yeah. And so it just, when you're in the turbo mode, yeah. when it's really trying to pull yeah. down and cool the area, then it's a thousand. See, that's pretty amazing. I have a, a 15 uh, KBTU unit on our, you know, regular RV air conditioner. Yeah. And that pulls 16, 1700 watts Mm -hmm. constantly and the hotter it gets and the more ambient the temperature is like the more it tends to draw and like because yeah. it starts out at about 1400 and then it just kind of slowly ramps up um, and so even with a smaller system like ours which is 1200 watts and 810 amp hours yeah. of lithium batteries uh, we can run our air conditioner kind of on and off for a day or two mm -hmm. but then our big bank is pretty depleted and that's where you know I kind of wish 1200 watts is is great but I would take double that in a heartbeat if if we could fit it. Now we aren't. We're in the winter time right now, right? We're in by Yuma, Arizona. This is the sunniest spot in the United States. Most solar days they have like 320 solar days uh, here. Is that why it's so snowbird popular? Yeah, it is weather it's, and yeah. price and beauty and it's all those things. But uh, our performance right now is about half of that. We've got 3,000 watts right now in the winter time with the sun is low and yeah. we have flat panels yeah. uh, or flat to the roof. We're bringing in 1,500. The most that we've brought in was there was a, a, a brief time there, 2,000, 2,020 watts. Oh, wow. So if you are using 1,000 watts and you're bringing in yeah. uh, 2,000, yeah. then we're going to be able to charge our batteries yes. in addition to running the mini yeah. splits. You can run, you think about a microwave runs 1,000, 1,200 watts. Yeah. So we're able to run our, our mini split, our microwave, uh, the refrigerator, the TV. That's amazing. I, I tend to agree with the you know oversizing the wattage of your your solar because there's a lot of different calculators out there and, and maybe professional opinions you know is it two to one you know solar to battery battery ratio if someone asked me I would say as, as much as you can afford and as much as your roof can hold mm. because if you you know the more that you you have you know that the more you're going to use mm -hmm. and to be able to be out in the desert like you said and, and be able to run your your mini split air conditioner and still be charging your batteries at the same time that's pretty special because yeah. you know at our 1200 watts in the this winter time like this with our curved roof and our air conditioner and all that we don't bring in 50 percent like that it's we might peak at you know 500 ish watts so a little less maybe 40 percent where doing at this particular angle yeah. and you know if we were running a high appliance that's 1800 watts or air fryer or something like that you know we're basically depleting our battery yeah you have to do a lot of calculations a lot of energy management on your on your own and and this particular setup we didn't want to have to do that anymore yeah um, and so we're we're really so far and this has only been a couple months here yeah but, um, so far so good 
Um, we're really looking forward to going into the summertime, into the high humid areas, and t really testing it all out and seeing yeah. if this concept really uh, is uh, as we designed. Yeah. I love it. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk with me today, Jeff. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video, this small solar talk from uh, two professional amateurs uh, in the solar field. And no, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's one of those great things to be able to, to live this lifestyle and to even be talking about yes. this type of power. And uh, it's just absolutely amazing out there. So thanks again yeah. for watching everybody. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. See you later. Yep.